Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to Lesson 2, Ethics and Social Responsibility. You're taking me in an online class or a face-to-face -face class at a community college, uh, and this is a supplement to the learning material that we've uh, discussed in class and uh, integrated software uh, as to help you as a student retain the information. So what we'll be doing now, I'm just going to be going over real quickly. I know that you have... Uh, access to my concept maps and the second tier so what's going to happen even though i don't go into detail i will open up my concept maps and you'll be able to either stop me go forward backwards and see the notes and the information underneath the, the plus signs that you see here the program you're utilizing here to create these uh, is uh, um, uh, mindjet sometimes people ask you know okay so it takes in the workplace Let's see what we have. We got, but let's, but let's talk about what's going to be in this uh, um, a section. We're going to talk just basic definition of ethics, a little bit about difference, you know, the difference between business ethics, what's an ethical dilemma, ethical behavior, just in case you're not sure of, and uh, you know, good ethical behavior, and unethical behavior. So what's ethics? Ethics basically is their beliefs about what is right or wrong, good or bad in actions that affect others or myself or an individual or something that I do that may affect the company or may affect as we're going to talk about st uh, uh, the stockholders, stakeholders, sorry, excuse me, inner, group, uh, inner guiding moral v uh, values and beliefs. You know, that's what ethics, you know, used to analyze or interpret a situation. I got feeling or conscience for lack of better words. Then decide what is right or appropriate way to behave. Okay, so it, uh, turn that off. So let's talk about business ethics. Business ethics is similar to individual ethics, only it's ethical or unethical behaviors by employees of my organization. I may be very ethical, but the people I hire may be doing something. So that's where you have to have the, the checks and controls within an organization. We'll talk about the code of ethics and standards, and uh, you know later on within this uh, series, we'll be talking about HR or human relations and how do I try to find that good ethical individual okay so now what's okay so now you have ethics right or wrong so what's the big what's the big uh, deal what we have is what we call an ethical dilemma a quandary a people find himself acting in a way that may help another person by doing so may go against their own self-interest sometimes to do the right thing may hurt me or may hurt someone I uh, we care for or sometimes uh, I just leave it at that for now we discussed that in our discussion okay what's ethical behavior behavior that conforms to individual beliefs or organizations policies and social norms about what is right or good unethical behavior th that conforms to individual beliefs that social norms about what is defined as wrong and bad remember society and the influences how I grew up and the different environmental forces or exposures that I as an individual I as an employee work within an uh, organization develop what I would call my moral compass my conscience now because of these different influences, and companies may be more ethical in certain areas, they basically have a code of conduct since people have different values and different morals other and above what society is acceptable. By looking at individuals I'm hiring, I try to find those individuals that have similar beliefs and value systems that my organization and the brand of my company is basically trying to promote. That's all I'm going to say for now. We had a very intense discussion in the, in the classroom. Okay, so now let's go back into individual ethics. Individual ethics are based on my own beliefs, my own social concepts, and they vary by person, situation, and cultures. You know, I have different values. I had different values when I grew up in the inner city, and then my values and my morals or my uh, 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 beliefs 
changed as I, when I moved out to the suburbs or went into the military. So all these different influences. And then when I started working, my peer pressures in high school and, and you know, even in, in the military or even uh, at work, all those affect my beliefs and my social and my uh, uh, values, my, my, my moral con uh, uh, conscience, for lack of better words. In bureaucracy, the law, and the real world, societies adapt formal laws. Remember, most of the laws that we have here in the, in the United States uh, are basically a reflection of what we feel as a society, their ethical standards for our culture. Real world situations, difficult to interpret. Okay, individual values and courts, determined by a combination of factors from childhood. You know, how. Um, you saw your parents. Remember, one thing about ethics is you could tell people, don't steal, don't do this, be ethical, here's what my values are. But unless you have your actions or support with that, it's just words that have no meanings. Because you could have all the words, but they tell you don't steal, and they see you being uh, stealing. They see you being rude to customers, even though you say ethically uh, all customers are correct. So remember, as a manager and a leader, your actions will basically determine and strengthen the ethical behavior within the realm of uh, influence you have within your organization or within your department. Okay? All right, now business and managerial ethics. Standards of behavior, very easy, that's easy. Most companies that come in, here's our standard behavior. Guide individual managers in the work. Behavior towards individuals, right? As a manager, I have to be very ethical about hiring, firing, wages, so I'm not uh, showing any kind of favoritism. I'm fair, objective, and treat all individuals equally and um, uh, fairly, just the ethical thing to do. Behavior towards the organization. I have no conflict of interest, confidentiality, or, or honesty. I know I'm working for the organization. I don't tell my competitor uh, certain things that they should not know. I basically defend the organization. They're paying me a, serv a, a wage for my services. So the ethical thing to do is to do a good day's work honestly and you know no stealing no lying whatever about the organization okay behavior towards other uh, uh, economic agents relationship between firms suppliers customers stockholders and unions as a manager i have to be again the different organizations different functions uh, uh different groups i have to always treat them just like individuals uh, fairly and uh, ethically Okay, now the, the you I'm not naive. There are some corrupt managers that focus not on creating stockholders' wealth, focus not on building, uh, uh, building the company's capital. You know, they're stealing from them or they're uh, uh, wasting it or utilizing it for their own self uh, gratification or for their own self purpose, maximizing their own personal capital and wealth. Okay. You know, uh, uh, lying on your timesheets or padding your uh, uh, expenses or whatever. Okay, now how, you know, we talked about assessing ethical behavior within our discussions. So the first thing I had to do is gather information. What are my standards? What are my rules? What are the actual facts? Not what I think I saw. What actually did transpire? I analyze those facts against the standards or the policies, the code of ethics within the organization. I make an ethical uh, judgment based on how right or wrong and, uh, the proposed activity or policy is. And then I have to, as a manager or even as an individual, whether you call me a whistleblower, uh, one saying, hey, this is not right. This is not the, the values of the organization. This is not the values of society. And I take action and say, hey, we should uh, change it. I make it voice. I follow the rules and, you know, and, and work it through it in the system. Okay? I don't go outside the system. I utilize the system first and make sure to see if the system or the organization. A lot of organizations say, we don't even realize this and it will make uh, uh, corrections. Okay? 
let's not be naive. Some do, some don't. Depends on the organization and what's going on. But the majority of organizations are ethical organizations. They're not out there to rip off people. They're not out there to rip off employees. They're not out there to rip off uh, the government. They're just good, hardworking uh, uh, businesses. And remember, what you're going to find out with ethics and everything else, some businesses or even individuals, you make a wrong choice. And because of that wrong choice, you try to cover up that choice, for lack of a better word. And by covering up that choice, it kind of snowballs into a larger and more of your credibility and honesty is in question. Because people say, hey, wait a minute, you weren't 100% truthful with me. Okay? So now, we've, we took care of assessing ethical behaviors. Now, what are ethical norms? The, the, the author we talked about are, are several ones. Utility rights, justice, and caring. And there's different models. I'll just really, uh, you know, I, I briefly uh, covered them, but these are the models we're looking at. Okay, so the first one is utility. Does a particular act optimize the benefit of those who are effective? That is, do all revenue parties receive fair benefits? you got to be fair and honest. Remember, as a manager, I don't want to, or, or even a, a, an owner, I want people to like my product. I want people to say, hey, this is a good, high-quality product. I like people working for me, say, George is honest, George is, uh, um, for lack of better words, is uh, ethical. He always places the company, the employees, and everyone uh, above himself, uh, you know, over, uh, above himself. So he basically uh, makes sure that they come first. Okay. Now the next one's rights. Does it respect the rights of individuals involved? And that could be corporations or any other uh, uh, stakeholders. We'll be talking about a little different. The next one is uh, justice. It's consistent. What it is fair. The next one is caring, consistent with people's responsibility to each other. You know, there's something real, some corruption, okay? Model of echo, uh, ethical judgment. And if I look at it this, so when we took, look at make this a little bit bigger for you. Everything we discussed in class is one model. Oops, sorry. Undo this. Okay, let me just click on this. Give, just give me a second. Let's look at this. So when we're looking at what we discussed here on this model, made a little bit bigger, you got gather information, right? Gather the facts concerning the policy, utility. You ask yourself those questions. There's always one way to make sure, hey, is this ethical or unethical? It's a process you're going through. And in business, you go through a similar process. Ask, yes, no, maybe so. And until you remember, you're intuitive or your conscious is telling me, hey, something's wrong. Is it or is it just I'm oversensitive? Analyze the facts, right? No. Criteria, no two. Is there any two reasons overriding one or two of the ethical norms? Is there any reasons why a person may have been forced into committing the act? Or You, know, you always have to look at two sides and then empathy comes in. You know, here's our policy, but did I do something to tell a person to do because he or she was pressured by me or by another manager or something that I've done or a company, some kind of action that they inadvertently did something wrong that is now viewed as unethical by my standards or by society, and how do I resolve this? I always give a person a benefit of doubt. That's where you know you're caring and you're looking out. You know, the act or a policy is not ethical, the act or policy is ethical, okay? And you go through and make an ethical decision, all right? So now, you have other models that, you know, you, you talk to your individual, moral justice. I just threw it out uh, in the class. We didn't discuss them and within the classroom. Was just, you know, uh, no, they fall along similar into the same path if you look at uh, in here. Uh, they just present a little bit differently. Okay? And remember, ethical responses are learned through experience. How I respond is not only I learned through experience, how I responded. Sometimes I felt bad. I wish I would have done it this way. I would have done something differently. And, or, you know, instead of giving something to this guy, I was really mean. I said, man, I should have asked first or find out something else. Remember, you make those adjustments. If you start making poor decisions, poor unethical decisions, you're changing that moral compass because you say, well, everyone's doing it. We'll talk about it a little bit, uh, you know, when we talk to the class, everyone is doing it. That's what business is doing. So I, just what the heck, everyone else is doing it. What you're doing is you're changing a moral compass, leaning more to unethical behavior instead of keeping a moral compass uh, going to ethical behavior because everyone's doing it is that still right okay i'm not even talking about the legal issue remember there's a big line uh, and we'll get into you know source of ethics and everything else when uh, you know and, 
I'll go through the lecture. We'll talk about it. Okay, so if I'm looking at this source of ethics, and I've got this one in here, uh, business ethics, you have society, you have individuals, organization ethics, occupational ethics. All these are environmental forces that are I'm exposed to from childhood all the way to adulthood to the first time I get my first uh, uh, job. And then as I work within a company, I see what's going on. I see, you know, what are the politics, what aren't right, uh, what should be right. You know, anywhere for different managers, different companies, some companies more ethical than others. Uh, hopefully they're all ethical, but those have an input on me. Okay. That's all it is. I'm not going to go into it, but I did tell you, I open up, you got society tells me about the standards, you know, how you deal with one, other, you know, the golden rule for lack of better, treat someone like you'd want to be treated. You know, I don't care what culture, what religion, they all have like that golden rule. Okay. Occupational, how members of a profession or a trade or a craft conduct himself are performing work related activities. Remember, a lawyer, he's got some confidentiality. Medical, you don't tell everyone a teacher, you don't make this student feel bad you don't tell another student what well, he or she's not doing well they have some privacies and you have an as individual you know uh, what, what you feel is responsible responsibility other people's in group act in situations with their own self-interests are at stake you know, you're still looking at it uh, like it or not what's in it for me how am I going to feel uh, you know if someone saw me do something unethical how do I feel when I did something that's ethical and they say, hey, George, you did a nice job. I feel good. I feel something unethical and I, oh, geez, I wish I didn't do that. Yeah. So look at it. Ask yourself first before you act. Okay. An organization, guiding principles of belief, managers, uh, if you uh, view the responsibility towards the stakeholders, and stakeholders are everyone that touches your organization. Top managers, you play a, a critical role in determining the company's ethics. You set the policies, you set the standards. So if you say everything's all ethical, and all of a sudden I read about you in a paper, you're doing something unethical, all of a sudden I say, hey, what else is going on? Okay. Now, stakeholders. When we talk about stakeholders, we basically see different stakeholders. You have employees, you have suppliers, you have communities, you have customers, you have managers. And, and so when I look at stakeholders, uh, uh, ensure that managers are behaving ethically, not risking investors' uh, capital, action that could hurt the company's reputation. You also want to maximize ROI, return on investment. All right. They hire you. They hired you to manage your business. Or if I'm a farmer and I hire a laborer to uh, plow the fields, or, you know, water the plants, whatever you're doing, to, to do a service, I want to do it ethically. If I say, hey, I don't want to use any pesticides, I don't want to put in anything, I want it to be natural, don't do that behind my back. That's unethical. Because as an organization, I'm selling to my uh, uh, customers saying, hey, we are uh, uh, chemical free. We don't use any kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, pesticides at all. It's all natural, healthy. Okay? All right. Now, when I look at employees, when I look at employees, remember, to a uh, stake, uh, 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 stockholders, I want to be fair and trusted uh, and ethical to my employees. I, you know, make sure they receive the fair compensation. I don't rip them off. Consistent with the performance, the company must at all times keep its words, okay, and provide structure that is fair. Now, suppliers, I also got to expect, suppliers expect me to pay them on time for the contractual agreement and uh, that I agreed with them, provide them the quality products, and suppliers should give me the quality of products that I gave. And on this one, there's a whole bunch of things we talked about, the environment, discrimination, forced laborers. You know, uh, this is uh, some principles from GAP's code of uh, vendors, you know, child labor, forced labor. And this because a lot of times, you know, GAP, for lack of better words, uh, they buy a lot of their clothing or some of their clothing are from overseas. So just certain values and ethical uh, standards they require from their manufacturers, even overseas, to follow. That's the, uh, the principles of GAP. So when I buy a uh, uh, cloning from gaps. I understand there's, all, there's no child labor. The, the employees are paired fair when we talked about parity. Compensation, depending on the culture and uh, the currency. You know, that's uh, when we talk about parity uh, uh, later on in finance, I'll explain a little bit of that. Okay? I'm paying them fair wages within their environment. Okay? 
uh, customers. You include most critical stakeholders. The customers, uh, the company must uh, try to increase efficiency and effectiveness because the customer wants the best price, the best quality and quickly and on time to attract new customers. And I think Whole Foods, this is how Whole Foods new business parameters, team members, motivate team members, uh, innovation, uh, customer supply, satisfying, delighting the customers, sales growth, increase. All these are core values, you see what I mean? So, and at every level what Whole Foods is saying, you know, this is our company. We give them quality food, but we treat everyone ethically and respect. And people understand that. They pay a little bit higher price, but they understand that uh, uh, everyone within the distribution, within that ch channel, is treated fairly. Okay, effects of unethical behavior. Okay, and this one has an effect. Unethical behavior, you know, incre ethical behavior increases effectiveness, efficiency, because people know they do more work, they're going to be paid properly, increases the company's performance. We look good, shareholders like that, um, uh, right? Because the company making a profitability and everyone's getting a fair share, increases national standard of living well bearing. Unethical behavior reduces efficiency because I'm ripping off people. And after a while, people see I'm being ripped off, they're going to rip off the organization. It's a vicious cycle. Uh, reduces company's performance because people are trying to rig the system so it's not really the right numbers. They're playing games just to get the bonuses because they felt that they were taking advantage or the bonuses or the uh, uh, goals were so out of line. There's no way they could reach it unless they did something unethically to uh, uh, achieve those goals and reduces the, uh, the national labor because then the company loses uh, overall and everyone loses employees, suppliers, everything else from the economic or into the distribution channel. Hurts trust and hurts the reputation. Companies practice and business ethics, adapted written codes, and uh, instituting the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, ethics codes. And it's basically a code of ethics. They have it up in here. All right, so if I'm looking at the code of ethics, code of ethics is a written document. To, since we have, we hire people from everyone else, we want people with integrity, but everyone has different ideas what is ethical, what is unethical. So the organization says, when you're working for me and doing business underneath my umbrella, so I'm paying you for the service, here is our code of ethics, and you should follow these rules and policies. And a lot of them that are above and beyond what society may ask, above and beyond what the legal systems are. Or some, maybe just enough to keep them legal. Depends on the organization. And remember, those are all influencers within the environment that you, as a business owner, an employee, or a supplier, have to work in this part of the business environment. Right or wrong. There's some good people and there's some bad people. Same thing in business, okay? Now, stakeholder model responsibility. So if I'm looking at this, this 500, okay, let's go in, uh, um, the next one we're gonna be going is in uh, social responsibility. Uh, approach is social responsibility, responsibility is, okay? So stakeholder responsibility, there's five things. When I look at social responsibilities, I'm going out of ethics, I'm going to social responsibility. I'm looking at customers, I have to be socially responsible to customers, and it's also ethical. Treat fairly employees, fairly respect the dignity and human rights. Investors uh, follow accounting procedures, uh, misrepresentation, no inside training. I'm still in ethics, sorry. Um, I know there's a cutoff here. Uh, suppliers uh, create mutual beneficial uh, uh, partnership, and local communities uh, involve programs and charities. All right, so it is social responsibility and others. So I'm looking at social responsibilities. I got internal employees. I'm, I'm responsible to them, treat them fairly. And remember, social responsibility and ethics, you can see they tie together. If I'm unethical, odds are I'm not very charitable. Odds are I'm not very social responsible because I'm trying to always find that edge find that loophole to get out of doing something the right way just so I make a few extra pennies. It's not very, you know, it's a business class. What I found out, same thing when I was in the corporate world, I treated people fairly, treated them ethically. When I received my rewards, when I received my bonuses, I knew I did it with all heart. I didn't cheat, I didn't lie. You know, sometimes people, do, did better than I did, but I knew didn't do it uh, right. You know, everyone else knows, sometimes the company doesn't know, but that's fine, okay? Now, responsibility to the consumer. Consumers have a bill of rights. 
you know, legally they have a bill of rights. So consumers have a safe product. When I buy a product, it should be safe. Right to be informed about relevant aspects of a product. Consumers have a right to be heard. There's something wrong. So you see a lot of things have feedback or surveyed. Right to choose what you want to buy. That's our society, part of our uh, standard of living and, you know, quality of life. Consumers have a right to edu be educated about their purchases. Tell me what's wrong. I'll make my determination. Consumers have the right to courteous service. Okay? You shouldn't be rude. Uh, you know, they've got a right to be upset and you've got a right to say, hey, I don't have to pay for it. Uh, I disagree with you, but here's a, you'll still treat them with respect. They may not be upset with you if you're just a, a, the, the first person they're interacting. They respect with the company, uh, they're upset with the company policies and you are, are an agent of the organization you're representing. You're a salesperson, manager, or a department head, or the owner. You know, and then here's a policy, explain why they may not agree, but at least you, they know the rationale and the, the, the reason why it was selected this way, why the policy was in place, okay? Uh, consumerism or social activism, uh, delicate, uh, de dedicated to protecting the rights of consumers, those are groups out there, in dealing uh, with businesses you have, uh, uh, you know, the Better Business Organization. You have Angie's List. I'm trying to sell one. I'm just a whole bunch of other ones on there. George's List, Jackie's List. There's a lot of lists out there. Some are free. Now, here's what you have to look at ethically. Who's paying for that list to be evaluated? If it is the business paying to be on there, odds are, is there a conflict of interest? If it's the customer paying, odds are, there a conflict, you know, the customer may not want to pay. So sometimes it's free, but who is actually funding and paid? And sometimes it could be a government agency or it could be an outside uh, a social uh, uh, activist uh, uh, organization, uh, non-organization, NGO, non-government organization that may be funding that. But just follow where the money is coming from. This is something to think about. Okay, unfair pricing, you know, conclusion, if, you know, we're looking at a fair market. We talked about the uh, economic class uh, a lesson. So if you only have a few players in there after a while, I could price fix, which is uh, not right. Price gouging, I'm the only store there. I can raise my prices. I mean, you don't want to fly, drive over there. This is it. Like, you know, it's just not ethical. You know what I mean? Because the minute you have a competition, then they're going to drop you. They're going to remember you took advantage. You know, how are you going to go to sleep? You have all this money and you know you're up to off people as a business owner that doesn't make me feel good you always worry someone to rip you off because you ripped them off what comes around goes around my little words of wisdom okay now you have responsibility to employees what makes your organization is your employees they're the most expensive uh, aspect of your business and a lot of people are going they got to pay them benefits health care all that is fine but your business you, if you hire the right employees they're the one who's going to generate customer service. They're the ones who's going to be ethical. They're the ones who's going to generate new ideas. They're the ones who are going to bring customers to your shop. They're the ones who are going to help customers buy your products. They are your strongest assets. If you have the right employees, they will come back and your company will blossom. Okay, so, but part of that is don't burn them out so they, yeah, I, I just an employee, they're working, and then the heck with it. No. Help balance work and life pressures and preferences for them. You want them to work, give them time to relax. Don't hassle them 24-7. I know as a middle manager or an entrepreneur, small business owner, you are working 24-7, but you have to find that balance. Just like in a corporate, you have to find a balance. Corporation, you have to have policies to help individuals to find that, pal, uh, that balance, okay? Otherwise, the government steps in. If you're looking at truck drivers, you know, they would drive no matter what because they're generating, they want the money and everything else, which is fine. We want to improve our family, our, our status in uh, life. Government said too many accidents, you're falling asleep, and now they tell the industry, here's how uh, much you should work. Look at some of the uh, rules that they have. Are you, uh, are you a manager or you are an individual contributor, and should you be paid overtime? Some companies take advantage of you because the you know, job market is hard, the economy is down, there's not so many jobs, you get good paying jobs, so they work you so hard without giving you their balance to spend time. What are you working for? You're working for family and also for yourself, but you're working for family or give back to society.
okay uh, 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 treat uh, terminated or laid off in, employees with respect and compassion you know sometimes hey we're sorry the company's downsizing you had the skills let me off your job training let me give you a letter of references let me give you at least three months four months uh, severance pay just to get on your feet you know but don't make them feel hey you're no good you know you're not worth it yeah that's not the that's not very responsible because other employees say, hey, look how sh they're treating them. They work for five years, like they're treating them like dirt. And now also you're going to lose those employees. Remember, your actions will have certain causes, certain consequences in the future. Okay, now, the other one provides its employees with equal opportunities Remember, uh, without regard to race, sex, or uh, irrelevant uh, facts, meaning both its legal and social responsibility. Now, you have responsibilities to the environment. I'm, I'm, I'm a social responsibility now. Remember, social responsibility and ethics, they tie together, as I mentioned earlier. Air pollution, water pollution, land pollution, toxic waste, recycling. Utilize, you know, I'm not doing any kind of air pollution. All right, uh, right, uh, uh, water pollution. And sometimes, you know, you know water pollution, uh, am I dumping something? Am I disposing it the proper way? Land pollution, am I just throwing it out? Or am I actually recycling? Do I have something to tax away? Do I uh, dispose of it properly? Or say it costs me too much to put it in a bag? That's not fair, okay? Now, approaches to social responsibility. We have this figure here, and, you know, and, and this one's kind of good. It talked about uh, obstruction issues, uh, defensive approach, optimization. I had a different one in here. That's okay. I just looked at this one. Oh, what happened? I had a better one. I must have just forgot it here. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, you look at the companies choose not to behave in a social manner. Defensive companies stay within the law. Accommodative companies behave uh, uh, legally and ethically uh, against one another. Proactive companies uh, actively embrace socially responsible behavior, learn about needs of different stakeholders. Okay, so if I'm looking at all this, okay, just hang a second here. Okay, I have, uh, I just loaded it, sorry, I was off for just a little bit. This one basically is the one we had, uh, uh, the author presented in a book, and here's just another one. It has the same thing, but it has everything in here. So when I'm looking at social responsibility, when I'm looking at reaction, deny or ignore the responsibility, I didn't do it, you know, or accommodation, accept social responsibilities in response to pressure or defense, put up a fight, tobacco, no, it's not wrong with our, our product, it's not a, a, a addictive, or proactive, taking the initiative to establish a positive model for the industry. The degree of social responsibility from low to high is just reaction, whatever happens. If no one says anything on it, don't worry about it. Deny, deny, once we get caught, I'm sorry. Or to the high of proactive. Hey, are you sure this is, uh, we found something wrong in our process? You know, I didn't start off to to make the uh, the product safe or to be some kind of a reaction for people utilizing it. But after a while, I'm getting complaints and all of a sudden, oh man, we there's a flaw in here. Should I allow, uh, should I tell people, hey, it's some gone. And if you look at our credit, somebody broke into uh, and stole my data from an organization with my data. I didn't have it. I didn't know no one took it, even though I was aware of it. Or do I start saying, I have got systems in place to protect you, and the minute something happens, we'll notify you so you can start uh, 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 making sure you take corrective action or protective action on your part. Okay? So that's basically what this, this is everything else in here, and that's what we discussed. It. Okay, so now let's, let me go back out of here. I'll just close these two up. Somehow. Here we go. Let's close the figure up. Okay? Now, let's go back on here. Organization. How do organizations influence government? We've got an election going on. You know, Democrats, Republican, Independent Party, whoever. Remember, as a business person, those of you who have me in class, and I tell people, as a business person, I don't get involved. Uh, I don't take sides. I contribute to both parties, depending on who, uh, who uh, basically uh, wins the election. I may have a preference, but I don't take sides because from a business perspective, I treat all customers properly. The politics, just their own personal. I try not to involve because I say I'm a Democrat, then the Republicans don't come to my shop. I say I'm a Republican, then the Democrats don't come to my shop. I basically says I'm an independent. I love everybody as long as you got MasterCard, Visa card, or cash. I'm very ethical.
All right now, how do the organization influence the uh, 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 government? They don't vote, even though the, the entity companies themselves cannot uh, uh, legally make direct uh, uh, donations to political campaigns, but they have political action groups or PACs. Uh, special organizations create to solicit monies in behalf of the organization and then distribute it to political candidates. You also have lobbyists, the use of persons or groups to formally represent an organization or a group of organizations for political bodies. It necessarily has to be organization. It could be nonprofit group. It could be special interest group. And the lobbyist group is not to sway them, but to educate them. Because remember, a lot of our um, uh, congressmen and representatives are lawyers, doctors. They may not be uh, physicists. They may not be in a medical profession that understands the outcome of uh, you know, or a process of a certain drug or a certain uh, uh, new technological uh, item coming in that could affect uh, the, the general population. So lobbyists are out here, here, giving them the whole story, telling businesses, hey, we're really good, we got a good product, get rid of some of the red tape, don't pass this law because it'll affect us adversely, affects us, affects your constituents that are working for us, and they're also people who vote for you. So all those has uh, effects. So lobbying has its purpose. PAC has its purpose. Remember, they pay tax, everything else, but they cannot directly uh, 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 give to the organization. Okay? Now, the next one we have is formal organizational dimensions. So you have legal compliances, the extent to which, let me just move this over a little. Uh, legal compliance, the extent to which or, uh, organization conforms to local, state, and federal, international laws. I have, you know, if I'm doing something in China, I have to follow the rules. If I'm doing something in the United States, I follow the rules. If the United States got certain uh, privacy uh, restrictions that I can't violate, I follow that law. China has a different set of rules. Now, here's where the ethical behavior, uh, ethical uh, dharma comes in. I'm open. China has more of a stricter control on their population. Do I violate mine just to have business there, or do I adjust? They have to adjust to our standards. We have to adjust to their standards. And that's the business. Remember, is is it's just things that may not be illegal, but are the ethical and moral to your brand and to your shareholders and your stakeholders that buy or what do you represent as an organization? That's part of it's carried over into your social responsibility. Okay, then we have ethical compliances. Well, they should be over there. Is members of the organization follow basic ethical legal standards, philanthropies, awarding funds or gifts to charities or worthy causes, not to some foundation to that basically is a way of getting money back to me or a foundation that is indirectly uh, benefiting my organization, but not the people that the foundation is supposed to be supporting. You know, philanthropy is okay. A lot of uh, businesses give to charitable organization because they feel it's the right thing. To, they're helping their society. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? And here's some examples. Target organizations gives 5% taxable income to charity and social program. It's very strong. So a lot of people, you know, shareholders like that, customers like that. They don't they buy anything else to give back to the society that, uh, or, you know, social responsible back to the individuals, to the group that are buying their products and helping them be successful. Uh, all mistakes uh, gives a hundred thousand per year to support the arts. Okay, evaluating social responsibility. You have a social audit. It's a systematic uh, analysis of a firm's uh, success or social uh, responsibility goals in using funds earmarked for its organization. Okay? So, whew, that was pretty good. So let me just go real quickly. I'm going to just expand. I'll put this all one level. I'll put this out. We covered a lot today on uh, ethics and social responsibility. What you've noticed is that it takes both. If I'm ethical, I'm usually very social responsible. If I'm unethical, odds are social responsibility is someplace down there. The question I wanted to, just to, the real general is, should an organization be socially responsible? Yes. Should an organization give back to the community? Yes. Is it required? No. Does everyone give to charitable organizations? No. Should they? Yes, because it's good 
business, it helps the environment, it's good public relations, it's good for the brand, it shows that the organization is not only for the money, but it's also to help these people. There's floods in Louisiana, there's natural disasters, you see a lot of organizations bringing water, generators, helping the people there without any strings attached. Here we go, help you to survive. You know you're suffering, but in the back of your mind, they know really down the road you remember that Honda or uh, some organization or Walmart or Target or somebody uh, helped you out when you were in need as a whole society. And they're sure they get right off on taxes, they do write it off on taxes, they do use it sometimes, sometimes they use it for public uh, uh, PR, sometimes they use it as part of their marketing campaign, look what we've done. Now, uh, and I, I just showed up Honda or, or, or some uh, international companies working here at the United States, and something happened and everyone else chipped in and they were getting some feedback, and I'm not sure if it was Honda or Yamaha, or, it was, a, it was a, a, a Japanese organization, and they were upset that they did not help anything out. And then what basically was found out was that, yes, they were giving it to us, but because of their culture, they don't brag about it and say, look what we did. They didn't use it in advertising. They were very subtle, just quietly, and just sent all that information out. So, the, you know, the, remember, a lot of people are out there, and there's nothing wrong when I'm giving up for the public publicity to offset some of the costs. I'm a business, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, and some people say, well, that's not ethical, ethical is still legal. And other people say, well, they shouldn't do it. You look, if I'm hurting and everything was lost, I don't really care if their heart was in it or not. They're helping me out. You know, so they write off on taxes, big deal. You, you know what I mean? I need that. I remember that they at least took the effort and at least tried to help me. All right? So don't worry about what they're motive was as long as it's helping that the cause is and that's basically what i'm going to say now on ethics remember a lot of people when they go to work and everything else you have some people that are unethical some businesses are unethical from the beginning they're unethical when they're kids they're unethical when they go to high school they lied they cheated and the whole life is like that okay you've had it as a small percentage but you your business are very ethical Majority of your leaders are ethical. What happens? They make a mistake, and then they try to cover it up. And by the cover up, it snowballs, and then they lose the trust and everything else. You know, you you made a mistake, you messed up. Stand up, take the punishment, and go forward. People respect you a little bit more. I know it hurts, and may, sometimes you feel uh, foolish, or you know, I don't believe I did that. But things happen. You have to look at it and move forward. Will people believe that you're sorry? Some will, some don't. But at least you made that effort, all right? And social responsibility always help people. And remember, what happens is a lot of times when your business is struggling and you're barely surviving, just like in our individuals, remember the business is surviving and they cut off some of the funds to certain uh, uh, charitable organization. Just in the survival mode. No different, a lot of people, you should give, but uh, you know, I'm barely making it, uh, so things happen, all right? But the thing to remember, if you're ethical and you respond to the customers, you those two elements, building trust, will not only help your business flourish, people come to your business over your competition, your shareholders will buy it. I do a finance class, and it says, how do you bring up, you know, shares are dropping. Why? Because the company did something wrong. People have no faith in there. If the customers don't buy your product, the shareholders aren't going to invest in you. They want a return on their investment, a fair return on investment. If their return on investment is too high, you know there's some shenanigans going on there, some unethical behavior. All right? So my name is Dr. George Machaki. Uh, uh, this is uh, lesson two, uh, ethics and social responsibility. You're taking me an online class or a face-to-face -face class at a community college. I teach in uh, uh, Lake County or uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, Cook County, Northern Cook County, in Illinois. Look me up. If not, uh, go to your local community college. You get professors like myself who have experience, who come out of the world, and so you get the academic, and you also get, um, for lack of better words, uh, uh, the true life, real life experience. How, why it's important. And I'll see you in the next section. Bye.